in charge of Chelsea in the Premier League. He'll have a big smile on his face tonight as well because the big transfer news is Chelsea have finally got their man. Moises Casado from Brighton has officially become a Chelsea player. Now it's £100 million up front. We understand it could rise to £115 million, in which case he will be uh, Britain's most expensive footballer. But when you look at the moment just because of the £100 million, uh, that has been paid up front. Uh, he's third behind Declan Rice and Enzo Fernandez, who we will come to uh, in a moment from that game uh, against Liverpool. Liverpool, of course, agreed the fee first, Michael. Uh, we understand Casada didn't want to go to Anfield. Chelsea have got their man. How significant? Yeah, I think it's very significant. I think he's an unbelievably talented player. I think him and Enzo Fernandez could develop into the best pairing in the Premier League in that, in that position. I think he's top, top class. He's young. He's got Premier League experience already. He's obviously super talented. Um, I think Chelsea are, are, you know, are, are looking quite good. 21 years of age, 44 games he's played in the Premier League. I think the market is going crazy. I mean, how much would Michael Owen cost these days? Go to the ball and... Uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, all seriousness, obviously he's massive talent. Uh, he probably is going to be even better for Chelsea with the team that uh, Pochettino is building. But in my opinion, 100 million is just too, too much uh, at the moment. But hey, you ask for this money, someone is going to give it to you. You take it, you sell the player. Uh, and you say, I, I agree with you, probably that's going to be a big, a big hit for, for Chelsea. So, you mentioned Enzo Fernandez there, who still is at the moment, until the, that fee rises, Britain's most expensive player. Yesterday, we saw him in a different role. What did you make of him? We did, and I loved it. I really, really loved watching him play. And in fact, we were watching it with Glenn Hoddle, and Glenn Hoddle knows a thing or two about a midfield player. And he was drooling throughout the game as, as one of the best performances he's seen in a long time. The one thing that we really loved about him, just, in fact, I'll just uh, pick him up here. This is him playing as a, a, as a number eight um, in this game. And just watch, just watch how many times he turns his head. He's, he's constantly surveying the picture. There's one, he's looking around. He's waiting for the ball. He's looking again too. By the time the ball actually comes to him, I mean, he's just got pictures in his head. Bump, round the corner. That absolutely kills the game. I mean, it literally kills the game. All of these players for Liverpool, all of these up here, they're all virtually out the game because of that one little bit of skill. And not only does he do that, watch his movement now. He doesn't just sit, sit there and admire his pass. He bursts a gut to get there. Massive gap in the Liverpool defence and he sees it, he exploits it. He's just a very, very intelligent player. He's always looking, always got pictures in his mind and he's just playing the game one, two steps ahead of everybody else. Again, you mentioned the position that he took up, Steve. Mm. This is him here with Connor, Connor Gallagher. Gallagher in a six. Yeah, he was in the sixth position. And again, always surveying. Look at his head. He's always doing, look, there was one. Taking a touch, not, not just happy with the, with the first one. He's off again. And then look at this for a beautiful ball. He's always momentum forward. He's just, he's just an absolute dream to, to play with, I'm sure he is. Um, so he's great on the ball. Here in this situation, again, we pick him up here. Lots of space in front of him. He knows where the space is, all right. Looking, turning his head. And what about this for a ball? He's looked already two, there's the third, third uh, little glance. And then a lovely little ball. Again, watch where he's going. He doesn't just stand and admire it. He gets up and watch again. He's constantly surveying the situation. He knows where everybody is. And despite everybody thinking he's looking in this direction here, Everybody's looking in this direction, possibly, possibly here, but no, he's got eyes in the back of his head, this fella. And as soon as the ball comes, how can he possibly see that pass? But he does. I mean, just a brilliant passage of play from him. So he's constantly surveying all angles. Probably Paul Scholes is the, is the one player that, that I um, watch that, that, that does exactly the same as that. Again, look at that for skill. I mean, he knows exactly what's around him and when he's in trouble, he's just got the skill to, to play out of it as well. Again, moving into a, an advanced position here. Bump, bump, and away. I mean, he's just got everything, Berber, for, for a midfield. This is, a, this is one little problem that he had. He loses the ball once in, in the game, probably. But look at his attitude to get back. The aggression, he wants to win it back. He's angry that he's lost it. He's charging, he's blocking people, 
and the, the team win it back and they're off on another attack. It was just a masterclass of... Uh, and him with Casado Berber in midfield, I think it's going to be some, some duo. Well, you know, the clip that you showed... Uh, with, with exception with two of the moments where he was in a really difficult situation where you need to use more than two touches to get away from it, everything else was one touch or two touch because he was doing this all the time. Yeah. So he knew exactly where he's on the pitch, where his teammates are on the pitch. Don't complicate the game. When you can pass one touch, pass it one touch. Simple. And as you say, what was really interesting yesterday was the advanced position that Mauricio Pochettino gave him. Um, at Benfica, he played a lot deeper. Four goals, uh, seven assists. But in that role, and I'm sure Mitchell Pochettino watched him back uh, playing for River Plate, uh, got 12 goals, actually, uh, in his time there in a further role. And he was in double figures uh, for assists as well. So clearly, as you say, that's the plan for him, with Casado now being bought as well. Going forward, that, that is some combination. Exactly. I think he's got so much going forward, it's almost... You're almost shackling him if you're just leaving him as a, as a number six. He can play it. Uh, he's very good at it. But I think when you just give him the, the freedom to go forward a little bit more, I think that, that you're going to see those numbers. Again, last season there, 23 appearances and no goals for Chelsea. That's going to change. If they get a hold of him, if they get a Casado, give him the licence to go forward, then I think we're going to see him scoring a lot okay. more goals. Um, just before we take a break, some breaking news I'm being told from Old Trafford is that Gary O'Neill, the Wolves manager...